This is Dr. Mark Rosenberg presenting the latest news on integrative cancer therapy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the program director of the A4M Integrative Cancer Fellowship. And I'm excited to come here and speak to all of you online to uh, alert you to all the latest news going on with, with cancer therapy. Um, certainly with our fellowship, uh, we're excited to be able to bring to you uh, individuals, physicians, MD, PhDs from all over the world to help bring latest cutting edge uh, treatments. And certainly, uh, as you will hear later on in the, mo in the modules or in, the, uh, in this four-hour session, you'll hear some exciting, exciting therapy, an exciting breakthrough, actually, that um, I've presented, and it, it got um, uh, A4M actually delivered it or sent it out to everybody. Uh, with a press release talking about this exciting cancer breakthrough. So we're going to give you a little teaser on this four hours of integrative cancer therapy, and hopefully some of you or all of you will end up attending the Cancer Fellowship because what you're going to learn even here in this four-hour session is not only very exciting, but it's extremely practical, and it, it will allow you to, to treat your patients immediately. And as most of you probably are aware, the current treatment for advanced stage cancer, the accepted standard of care, is chemotherapy. And as you will learn in this lecture, unfortunately, chemotherapy has not significantly extended survival for most advanced stage cancers in the past 30 years. When you listen to the, this four-hour seminar, you're going to learn how to improve those chances, improve the odds of patients surviving and even living with cancer as a chronic disease. Let me begin, for those of you, once again, who don't know me by, by telling you my background. I'm actually board certified in emergency medicine, but I'm a scientist. And I started a pharmaceutical company about a year ago called Rose Pharmaceuticals. And it was initially developed over a, uh, an obesity drug or uh, a drug to uh, cause weight loss. And uh, about six years ago, I diagnosed my mother with metastatic lung cancer. When I, when I diagnosed her, it was already metastasized to liver, spleen, bilateral adrenal glands, and left hip. And that's when I devoted my life to cancer research. And it, it has become my life and not just a, a hobby at this point. But uh, I did discover at that time that uh, drastic improvements in the treatment of advanced stage cancer need to happen and have not happened. And that's what brings me here today. That's why I teach the fellowship, and that's why I try to get as many physicians as I can involved in understanding, opening their minds to integrative cancer therapy, because we can do much better than we're doing. So let's, let's begin now by looking at the definition of cancer as defined by the American Cancer Society. According to the American Cancer Society, cancer is a group of diseases characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. Now, in the past 40 years, we have minimally extended survival for most solid tumors. <clears throat> but it's not uncommon for new drugs to reveal spectacular results by curing cancer in mice, and I'm very happy about that. Cancer is an epidemic in mice, and I'm so happy that we can cure cancer in mice. But unfortunately, that does not translate to humans. So one has to ask, are we truly studying cancer? Are we truly studying cancer in mice? So are our models through which we research cancer in the laboratory, are they even valid? Well, let's look at how we do mouse studies. Very commonly, we do human tumor xenografts. And that's where we have different cell lines of cancers that have been sitting in a culture medium for years and years and mutating. And then what we do is inject millions of those cells, typically into the subcutaneous uh, region of a mouse, and they grow a tumor. Now, is it really cancer? What we'll see is with many of those tumor xenografts, they just grow to be a large tumor, but they don't metastasize. So is that really cancer? Well, we try to make the model uh, more applicable to humans uh, that do metastasize. And so we'll often use transgenic mice. We'll take genes either from the same species or other species that allow the animal to be more susceptible to, to tumors. 
such as we, we commonly use the transge transgenic mouse uh, that is severe combined immune deficiency. Okay, that's a little better, but it's still not the same cancer that we took from the human. Something a little closer that's more painstaking um, is...